Hello, I'm Dominic Farinacci. This is the Clifford Brown Education Series, backed by popular demand. Not really, I never really finished a series. Sorry about that, sorry for the delay. So we're gonna get into a, an incredible solo that Clifford played on a live performance at Carnegie Hall. So I'm gonna take a little different approach on this video, and I'm gonna share with you the challenges that I had in getting this solo together, and you'll clearly hear them in a moment. The challenge I had in executing this solo really speaks to the perhaps the biggest challenge I have as a trumpet player to feel as comfortable on the bandstand as I feel in the practice room. And what I mean by that is I've done countless gigs where you know the practice room feels great, then I get in the bandstand and I start to overblow and play too loud and lose that nimbleness and that suppleness and it just doesn't feel good. And 10 minutes later, I want the gig to end. <laughs> So now what happened there? There were obviously a couple challenging parts for me that I was stumbling through. Why? Not because of the fingerings or because of the notes themselves, but because of the articulation. Because Clifford has such a specific and deliberate and percussive articulation that requires a certain kind of balance mechanically. And if you start to overblow, you're done. Halas. Finished. Go home. That's it. So when we're trying to achieve this right balance to fully execute uh, this solo, Let's slow the solo down and let's play it as quietly, but yet as intensely as possible, right? So when you're playing quiet, it's easy to kind of get, you know, to sound kind of wimpy or like not swing it or something. But if you have proper breath support and always think about playing quietly, but with intensity, that's really the key to helping to further ingrain this into your muscle memory and having it translate on the gig. So I'm gonna take, uh, for me, the most uh, difficult passage which is the, uh, the last A section of the second chorus. And it's difficult for me because it utilizes almost two octaves of range. So in, 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 in getting this specific articulation, sometimes it's challenging. So I'm gonna slow it down, play it quietly, but as confidently as possible. Right, so when you play it at that tempo, all the articulation and the accent, it's, it's, it's all very clear, right? So now, keep it quiet and start to increase the tempo with a metronome. Right? So now you start to hear some of that. So you want to try to clean that up and clean it up by practicing it slowly and clearly and only increase the metronome markings by, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 at a time. I just did a kind of a rushed version for you, so hopefully you get the point. So again, the key to this is really the dynamic level, to make sure that you're not playing too loud, 
but soft, intense, and in control. And if you start to develop muscle memory for that kind of technique, then it'll translate on the bandstand. So something that's kind of fun and, and definitely productive to do is to take Clifford solo and try to make it sound like another jazz great you love. For me, I love Nat Adderley. Now, why are we going to do this? Because Nat and Clifford have two, different, two, ways of, two separate ways of approaching uh, the swing rhythm. So it forces us to kind of think on a deeper level about Clifford's articulation, his accent, everything that goes into him executing this. And now we have to deal with another kind of swing, so we have to understand that as well. And all of this helps to reinforce the muscle memory because you learn, through this process, you learn what you need to do to be able to be in balance. And again, in hopes that it's going to translate on the bandstand, which it does. So, Nat Adderley, the thing I love about Nat is the way that he plays his eighth notes, right? So if you take the basic swing rhythm, and it's uh, based off of the triplet, so your triplet, the first and third note of the triplet, pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, right? So Nat Adderley really over-exaggerates that, almost to the point of, you know, it's sounding like uh, a, a beginner learning to play jazz. But it's on that fine line that it's just like super, super swinging and unique, right? So case in point, this is what he does. Instead of playing it like this. Nat will over-exaggerate it and get that bounce and go like this. Right? And if you listen to him and listen to how his brother Cannonball play, it's really similar, right? So we're going to try to incorporate that bounce into Clifford Solo to try to make it sound more like Nat Adderley. If you go to that most difficult section that I was just working on before. So it's hard to do, but again, now you're learning two different ways of approaching it and two different ways of ingraining it into your muscle memory. Another reason why this is kind of cool to do and again to prepare you for the live bandstand performance is because now you're dealing with two different types of swing, right? You have Clifford's eighth notes and you have Nat Adderley's eighth notes, which there's some similarities, but they're very different from each other, right? So when you're on the bandstand and you're playing with different drummers or different musicians, now you have more of a sense of, 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 of options to choose from, right? While you're trying to find your own kind of way to fit in. You know, the way that Clifford was playing eighth notes was directly because how Max Roach was playing his ride cymbal. Same thing with Nat Adderley. His relationship to Lewis Hayes' ride cymbal was really unique and special. So something to consider. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, as a trumpet player, it's always challenging to go from the practice room to the bandstand because in the practice room, it's a controlled environment and the bandstand, you don't know what to expect. And dealing with sound issues, de dealing with musicians who play at different volume levels, you have to make sure that in the practice room, you're doing things to well prepare you for that live situation. So these things that I showed you could help to prepare again, to reinforce that muscle memory, to make sure you know what it feels like to be comfortable in the practice room and try to do the best you can do on the bandstand to maintain that level of comfort so that you can have the same kind of nimbleness and the same kind of endurance that you have in the practice room. So thank you for checking it out. Again, I apologize for the delay. More videos coming soon. I promise it won't be another 15 years. And uh, I'm Dominic Farinacci and this is the Clifford Brown Educational Series. I have the trumpet lamp back. A lot of people asked about that, so it's here. Thank you.